Hello guys, this is Tony, and here is my personal top 10 animated movies that ruined my childhood. There's a special guest that will be my spokesman for this video. Relax now and enjoy the show. Number 10. Pinocchio Let's start with one of the first movies I've ever seen. The famous tale of the living puppet struggling to become a real boy was, you know, already pretty dark in the Italian novel. I mean, Pinocchio rips off one of the cat's paws with a bite and, you know, even gets hanged and dies. And, you know, of course, if you want a more faithful telling of the original story, I'd recommend The Adventures of Pinocchio by Giuliano Senchi. But the Disney version keeps some of the creepiness of the book and actually adds some darkness of its own. There's one scene in particular that haunted my nightmares for years. And to be honest, anytime I watched that movie until I was like six or seven, I was never able to look at the screen during that sequence. I'm talking about the moment when Stromboli throws a hatchet into the body of a corpse-like puppet with dead open eyes and a weird smile on its face. That was terrifying. I I'm sure that this scene is the main reason why I've always been afraid of dolls and uncanny stuff like that. Number 9. Coraline This picture, directed by the same man that brought us that gem called A Nightmare Before Christmas, is gorgeous looking, well written, awesomely animated. And of course, most of all, it gives the word creepy a brand new meaning. And come on, even the credits sequence is frightening. And that great score by Bruno Collet is just a perfect touch. I've got to admit, I was already 18 when I first saw this movie, but even as a big boy, I got genuine shivers down my spine during the third act. When the other mother, you know, one of the scariest villains ever shown on the big screen, becomes a sort of spider-like monster and attacks Coralie, well, that's one of the most effective horror scenes in the history of cinema, and you know, this goes beyond animated movies. Exciting, adventurous, eerie. This is a little masterpiece that will make you sleep with lights on for a while. Number 8. The Adventures of Mark Twain in this bizarre claymation classic from 1985, we follow the famous writer on his journey to reach Halley's Comet together with Tom Sawyer and his friends. Great piece of history for animation enthusiasts and pretty interesting film on its own. Much less childish than it might appear at first. Well, I have a pretty dark, unsettling memory of it, and apparently I'm not the only one. Why? Let me explain. There's an episode called The Mysterious Stranger based on one of Twain's novellas, in which Tom Sawyer and his band meet Satan himself. Well, that could be disturbing already, but there's more. The devil, in one of the coolest designs ever created, shows the kids a little clay village with little clay creatures and little clay animals, all created by him. And then, just for cold indifference, the devil sends a storm and an earthquake and kills everyone. Cows struggling for not falling to their deaths, mothers crying over the bodies of their dead children. That's madness. I mean, that goes beyond darkness. And I loved it. Number 7. Ringing Bell there are way too many anime that could scare a young viewer, but most of them are addressed to a mature audience. This ringing bell is instead clearly a product for children, or at least that's what it looks like during the first 10 minutes. It's the story of a sweet little lamb called Chirin who really loves his mother. One night, a lone wolf enters the pen and kills the poor sheep. Chirin, after crying over his mummy's corpse, follows the wolf and asks him to become his teacher. Chirin wants to become as fierce and ferocious, as strong and merciless as him since he can't stand being a victim. Well, in a weird turn of events, the wolf actually becomes Chirin's trainer and father figure before a tragic ending. This short movie is odd and beautiful at the same time. It starts like Bambi and ends like a Yakuza movie. There's violence, creepy imaginary, and most unbearable dark tone throughout the second part. Certainly not what you would expect from the creators of Hello Kitty. I know. Number 6. Animal Farm I've always loved British animated cinema. This movie, naturally based on the novel by George Orwell of the same name, faithfully follows the events depicted in the book, but strangely enough, 
changes the end of the story in a more optimistic way. Not a great choice in my opinion, but let's talk about the shock value. Well, what's so upsetting about the tale of anthropomorphic animals that run a farm on their own? If you've read the book, you'll know. Otherwise, the answer is simple. A lot of characters die. There are animals' deaths everywhere. For the most, the death scenes happen off screen, but the disturbing laments of the victims are definitely explicit. As a final note, the change to the sixth commandment, no animal shall kill any other animal without cause, is written in blood. That's the cherry on top, guys. Number five, Watership Down. Based on the homonymous novel by Richard Adams, isn't it curious that almost every movie on this list is based on a book? This is definitely my all-time favorite animated movie. Some rabbits foreseeing a terrible danger escape from their warden and after lots of misadventures arrive at a beautiful place called Watership Down. But their problems are not over. Our heroes meet a crazy rabbit dictator from another warren. And the ultimate battle between good and evil starts. This movie, considered one of the best English films ever made, contains all it needs to shock adults and little children. Plenty of dead animals, blood everywhere, some scenes are terribly gruesome, social and religious allegories, dream and nightmarish sequences. If it is too much for you, there is a lovely song by Art Garfunkel that will cheer you up. Just let me add, this is way better than the Netflix remake. Number four, The Plague Dogs. From the same director of Watership Down and once again based on a novel by Richard Adams, here is one of the saddest and disturbing movies in cinema history. Two dogs escaped from a vivisection lab run to the English countryside where a fox teaches them how to survive as wild animals. But a journalist spreads some fake news about the dogs being infected with the plague and a dog hunt starts. Spoiler alert. The end of the novel was quite charming as the two main characters, while they're trying to swim away from their chases, are rescued by some fishermen and live happily ever after. In the animated version though, the two dogs reach an island that magically appears in the mist. Since the song playing in the background says, I don't feel no pain no more. It's pretty obvious that, you know, they actually drown and the island is nothing more than heaven. Bonjour happiness. Anyway, the rest of this perfect example of a horror movie for pet lovers includes dead animals, people who get shot in the face, and even anthropophagy. You're welcome guys, sweet nightmares to you all. Number three, Felidae. There are no words to describe this German pearl. Excellent technique. Gorgeous drawings and designs, amazing animations for a quite original thriller set in a cat microcosm. Francis, a white and black cat, moves to a new, apparently quiet neighborhood with his owner. Actually, somebody is murdering some cats in the area and Francis starts investigating. The gore and the violence contained in this animated film would make any horror addict pale. Butchered and beheaded cats, clear visions of guts, scenes of vivisection, and moreover, we have an explicit, well, mating sequence. Mix the whole stuff with terrifying dream sequences, and I, I, I mean terrifying, just think of like, all dogs go to heaven on steroids. And you've got one of the most brutal cartoons ever conceived. Number two, swimming to sea. This is a recent entry in my personal ranking. This 3D Korean animated movie is just insane. Just imagine Finding Nemo, but instead of a funny aquarium for tropical fish in a dentist's office, we have a tank in a sushi restaurant. So yeah, you better try not to grow fond of any of the characters since there is a crazily high chance that they'll get eaten alive sooner or later. And this is by clients or by, you know, other fish. Seriously, not even in Italian horror movies from the 80s could I find so many scenes involving cannibalism. This is one of the very few films that actually made me gasp and hysterically laugh because of its shocking impact. I couldn't believe what I was seeing and, you know, I honestly loved every minute of it. There are even a couple of Disney-like songs just to confirm that yes, this one was made for children. There is something, there is something wrong here. 
And now, some honorable mentions. Speaking of South Korea, I strongly recommend Leafy, a hen in the wild that's not properly shocking, but remains one of the most depressing things ever produced by an animation studio. If you love your mother, you're gonna need a lot of tissues. Then there's the pretty obscure animated version of The Nutcracker. That's, you know, technically cheap looking, but contains some nightmare inducing images that still make me uneasy. The only reason I didn't put it on the official list, it's because this is not an actual feature length film. It's just an episode from a Japanese anthology series based on fables from around the world. Though it still remains one of my deepest childhood traumas. Then we have an animated adaptation of Bluebeard, just like The Nutcracker. Cracker. This was an episode from another Japanese TV show depicting fables by the Brothers Grimm. In this case, we have a genuinely frightening horror flick about a serial killer who murders his wives and collects their bodies in a secret room of his castle. When his new wife tries to find out what is kept behind the mysterious door, she sees the horrible truth and blood and zombie-like corpses start haunting her. This is not not for kids, but it's really one of the best things to ever come out of TV. And the number one animated movie that shocked me is... When the Wind Blows. This is the only movie I've seen that made me depressed and uncomfortable for an entire week. Based on the graphic novel of the same name by Raymond Briggs, it's the story of a loving old couple from the UK that, during the Cold War, survive a nuclear attack from the USSR. These exaggeratedly yet realistically naive people blindly trust the useless flyers and handbooks from British authorities, and they slowly start to die of radiation poisoning. That's it. A good half of the movie is the agony of these charming characters, basically the grandparents that anyone would like to have. They suffer, they comfort each other, and spoiler alert, but there's not really a great twist here. They eventually die together during their last prayer. Very slow paced, spectacularly animated, full of brilliant dialogues and great songs by David Bowie, Genesis, and Roger Walters. This is definitely one of the most unforgettable pieces of animation ever, and I still find it quite difficult to watch. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little personal list. Thank you for watching and special thanks to Farwon for Anime for his vocal comment. Would you introduce yourself? Hello there, uh, I'm 414 Anime. Thank you, Tony, for having me on your channel. So, I am an anime based YouTuber from the UK. I basically do anime character fact videos on characters from the series just coming out and some old school as well. These anime character fact videos are full of, you know, fun facts, interesting trivia, and, you know, pretty much full character analysis. Thank you. And what about you guys? What's the most shocking animated movie you can remember? I'm curious to listen to your experiences. See you soon guys, and thanks for watching!